Long before Victor opened the Maharaja, before Jasper discovered a labyrinth, before Nellie G became a fashion icon, and Annabelle became the spark of the resistance, vampires crawled along the streets, hills, and valleys of Los Angeles. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Masquerade Monday. Last time, we talked about the forming of the Free States, and in this final part, we will talk about the invasion of the Kuei Jin. So if you missed the fourth part, you can watch that here. Now, a quick disclaimer before we begin. Firstly, not just vampires are in Los Angeles. In fact, they were one of the last monsters in the World of Darkness to arrive in the area. And although their histories have affected the development of the city, we are just going to be focusing on kindred activity for this series. Secondly, as some of you may know, I don't discuss Kindred of the East on this channel, which would be the Wan Kuei or Kuei Jin to those of you more familiar with the Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines game. But they are entangled in a lot of the 20th century history of LA, so I will do my best to briefly cover them when relevant. Now with that out of the way, let's dive in. The Anarch Free States, having been formed, but not quite the utopia imagined by its founders, had been under threat by Camarilla subterfuge, Sabat sieges, and especially the infighting in between the various coteries and barons who rule the hunting grounds. But in 1998, the Anarchs found themselves under attack, not from the Camarilla or the Sabat, but strange creatures that came from across the ocean, the Kuei Jin. Now, Kuei Jin are the vampires of East and Southeast Asia, the karmically cursed outcasts dwelling on the fringes of society. Other terms to describe them include Wan Kuei, the Hungry Dead, or Cathayans, as most kindred call them. I will briefly discuss who they are and how they differ from kindred. The Kuei Jin's physical bodies are powered by a mystical energy, and that energy serves to heal them. Depending on the type of energy used, a Kuei Jin's body will have different attributes, ranging from a low-energy corpse-like state to a feverish state close enough to life that they can create new life. Apart from being faster, stronger, and tougher, a Kuei Jin can appear to be a living human being. Kuei Jin are effectively unliving batteries. They need and hunger for energy the same way that kindred hunger for blood, and they need no other sustenance. They even take more pleasure from food and sex than the dam do. Kuei Jin are also less tied to their bodies than might be expected. Because they are spirits wearing bodies, they can take an enormous amount of damage, including a little death that wipes out the body and forces the Kuei Jin to seek out a new host. More importantly, Kuei Jin are creatures on a spiritual trek. They have been granted a second chance and must earn their redemption in this new life. To do so, each Kuei Jin subscribes to a Dharma, and each Dharma outlines a different view of the universe, and the means towards achieving enlightenment. In addition to spiritual comfort, enlightenment brings strength. As a Kuei Jin advances in their Dharma, they learn to feed off things besides blood. Their ability to manipulate energy increases, and their abilities can achieve untold heights. Kuei Jin only arrived in Los Angeles in the late 1990s, and they clearly expected the City of Angels to collapse like a house of cards in the face of their superiority. At first, matters seemed to unfold according to plan. Kuei Jin foot soldiers swept down on unprepared kindred like an avalanche, and many of the kindred were wiped out completely or driven from the city. But eventually, resistance against the Kuei Jin hardened. Salvador Garcia, Jeremy McNeil, and others formed the core of a vigorous and active resistance. So much so that Kuei Jin met their final death in surprisingly large numbers, eventually forcing the Kuei Jin to negotiate. During the negotiations, several prominent Anarch leaders, including Salvador Garcia, sided openly with the Kuei Jin, and LA was incorporated into the new promise Mandarinate, what the Kuei Jin would consider their colony outside their homeland. Other Anarchs, such as Jeremy McNeil, protested, but were forced to leave the city and instead headed to San Francisco, where the conflict was still ongoing. In the wake of negotiations, Los Angeles was left in an unstable vacuum, with several factions vying for control under a tenuous truce. To protect their interests, the Camarilla installed a young prince, the ambitious Ventru, Sebastian Lacroix. Lacroix was born in the late 1700s in Calais, France. He received his military education at the Royal Military Academy before joining the ranks of Napoleon's Grand Armée. Lacroix ascended in the ranks of Napoleon's army until he was embraced by a Belgian noble, shortly after the Battle of Waterloo. He spent his vampire years making allies, ruining his enemies, and brokering deals. He eventually came to America in 1930. 
LaCroix built a cadre of primogen around himself, including the recently arrived Tremere, who had established a chantry in downtown not far from his headquarters. Some kindred in LA, like Therese Vorman of Santa Monica, acknowledged him. Others, like Isaac Abrams of Hollywood, refused any territorial claims. As a result, Los Angeles was a patchwork of domains under the control of different factions. Thin Bloods used lax enforcement to gather in large numbers in the city, but found themselves welcome in no one's domain. Around late 2004, the status quo fell apart, heralded by the arrival of the ship Elizabeth Dane and the artifact it carried, the Ankaran sarcophagus. In the wake of the struggle, the Kuei Jin were driven from LA and Prince LaCroix met final death. In the wake of LaCroix's death, the Anarch Free State appears to have reinstituted itself thanks to the upsurge of technologically savant kindred aligned with the Anarch movement. The Free State, however, was still under threat by the Camarilla, the Sabat, and themselves. As for the leaders of the revolt, they were all scattered or destroyed. Jeremy McNeil was last seen in San Jose, but rumors are he met the final death. Salvador Garcia became greatly involved with the Kuei Jin, but has not been seen in decades. And Tara Kearney, who helped secure San Diego for the Free States and became their baron, became disillusioned and felt that the Anarch Free States had not lived up to the ideals of the revolt. Tara became convinced that the Camarilla was right about technology and grew to believe that their rules were the only way Kindred could survive against the Second Inquisition. Tara turned on the Anarch movement and declared San Diego for the Camarilla. But on the orders of Baron Isaac Abrams of Hollywood, she was abducted in San Diego and was last known to have met the final death while in his custody. In the decade following the Ankaran sarcophagus crisis, a council of barons has re-solidified sovereign anarch domain over the city. The Second Inquisition eventually prompted the Camarilla to back the praxis of Vannevar Thomas, former prince of San Francisco. Both sects quickly negotiated a truce, but concerns over its stability and the status of the thin blood community continually threaten to shatter it. And that brings us up to modern nights as seen in LA by night. I hope you enjoyed this series, and as always, Thank you so much for watching.